would you describe your life in the 21st century? With cities like Orlando, Tampa, Clearwater, and St. Petersburg in the surrounding areas of Central Florida, there is a certain lifestyle that we might be accustomed to. We can go to a large mall to do all our holiday shopping, or get our groceries at the same place as our clothes or furniture in super centers. However, this part of the American culture varies greatly than the lifestyle of those in Florence or Rome, Italy today, let alone the rest of Europe. Not only are their shops different, but what they eat and what type of places they live vary. Many small family stores still flourish on their large shopping outdoor plazas, where they have an individual shop it seems for everything. One for just pasta, another one for jewelry, and the following one for leather goods, a product Florence, Italy is admired for. Now, if their lifestyle can be so different today from ours, what would it have been like during the Renaissance between 1400 to 1600? Let's go on a journey to find out what it would have been like to be a person living in Italy during this time period. As many societies in Europe at the time, people were divided into three classes, the upper class, the middle class, and the lower class. The middle class contained merchants, farmers, traders, and craftsmen. The lower class contained three quarters of the population, and their lives were a constant struggle for food and basic necessities. At the beginning of the Renaissance, people were moving from rural farms to towns seeking work, and cities grew as centers of commerce. Being cultured and educated also became more desirable during this period with the revival of classic literature, and as books became accessible, a structured educational system formed. As a new social class emerged, known as the bourgeoisie, or upper middle class, affairs related to business and manufacturing were of great importance. Priority was placed on educating the children in the ways of commerce and the values of hard work. Noble children attended four to six hours of school per day and went to work or to a university at the age of 15. A boy's education was extensive and he would be taught either by a governor, a college, or a tutor. Students were taught grammar and arithmetic. In privileged families, they would also learn Latin, Greek, logic, and philosophy. Along with formal education, a noble boy was taught riding, swordsmanship, dancing, and the art of war. While peasants were usually uneducated, they would learn trade through apprenticeships or at home. Some of them would go to cathedral schools where they would become a member of the clergy. During the Renaissance, marriage occurred for girls beginning at the age of 12 and 14 for boys. In lower classes, a man did not marry until he had obtained land or established himself in trade. Women also waited until their families could raise a proper dowry. In the noble class, girls were often forced into marriage very early to gain power and prosperity for their family along with beginning to produce heirs. In Italian households, the man was in charge and the woman had a more subordinate world, but nevertheless vital to the functioning of the society. She would run the house, bear and raise the children, and sometimes help sell things at the market. While rarely occurring when commoners had free time, they could fill it with playing cards, backgammon, gambling, or sometimes, if they were literate, reading poetry or literature. Middle and upper classes also watched ballets, fenced, and played chess during their leisure. Among the nobility, a game called Coliseo, an early form of football, originated. Reserved for the rich aristocrats, even the popes such as Leo XI played. Instruments like the lute, recorder, harp, and harpichord was also popular for leisure in the upper classes. During the Renaissance, food among the classes varied as well. In the upper class, fresh fowl was popular for the main dish with seasonings from around the world. For the lower middle classes, the daily markets in their own gardens were essential for food preparation of the day. As you can see in these examples, among others you could probably think of, such as clothing, life in the Renaissance was very different from today. How would your life be different if you were a person of the Italian Renaissance?
Oh, oh, oh.